Okay, this is problem 11-22E. It's on page 632 in the fifth edition. What's the page number in the sixth? Uh, 689 and 690. 689 and 690, thank you. The figure's on page 633. Uh, figure P11-22 shows the proposed design for a hydraulic press used to compact solid waste. The piston at the right uh, is capable of exerting a force of 12,500 pounds through the connecting rod to the ram. The rod is straight and centrally loaded. It is made from AISI 1040 WQT 1100 steel. Compute the resulting design factor for this design. So you understand what's going on. The piston is on the right and the ram is on the left. Now, notice that we've got a, uh, a connecting rod that's fairly long. And so that connecting rod may be subject to buckling. And we want to determine uh, the maximum load if it were to buckle. So we need to decide is it slender or not. Well, let's start off with what was given, AISI 1040 WQT, that's water quenched and tempered at uh, 1100 degrees, and the applied force to the rod is 12,500 pounds force. I'm not going to copy the figure onto the board. Um, some of the properties we're going to need will be material properties, things like the elastic modulus and yield strength. If you look up the properties of 1040 at this uh, treatment condition, we we'll find that the yield strength is 80,000 psi, and the elastic modulus is 30 times 10 to the sixth psi. Um, now, one of the first things to do is to find out the slenderness ratio and compare it to the column constant. Now, the column constant we can go ahead and calculate because we've got the material properties. We just found them, so 2 pi squared. Uh, multiplied by 30 times 10 to the 6th PSI divided by the yield strength of 80,000 PSI. What you notice is that the column constant ends up being dimensionless. Numerically it is 86.04 and it's non-dimensional. Now this is the cutoff, right? This is the cutoff that will tell us whether or not the column is long. If the slenderness ratio is above this, we'll consider it a long column and we will use the Euler equation. If it's shorter than this, then we'll use the Johnson equation. Okay? So let's see. So we need the slenderness ratio, which will be the effective length over the minimum radius of gyration. Okay? Now, since this is a round rod, I believe, isn't it? No, it's square. So which way would it tend to buckle? Let me draw the cross section. Let's go with, uh, let's try to go for the uh, radius of gyration and the Cross section is two inches by three inches. Which way would this tend to buckle first? About what axis? The y vertical. The vertical axis, that's right. Everybody see that? It has more stiffness this way about this axis. It has less about the other axis. Okay. So we're going to calculate the radius of gyration <coughs> for this axis. So if I start off by calculating the area moment of inertia, and I want to use bh cubed over 12, what's b and what's h? No, because that would be the area moment of inertia about this one, right? Let me, let me show you. The easy way to look at this is say, well, how can I minimize BH cubed by plugging these in? Well, if I plug in 3 for B and I plug in 2 for H, that would minimize I. Make sense? So again, we're dealing with this axis. So the base is this distance. The height is now that distance, the 2 inches. All right, so when you plug this into your calculator, you find that the area moment of inertia is just two <coughs> inches to the fourth. Actually, I think I have the dome in my head open, sorry. Uh, while we're at it, while we're dealing with area properties, we may as well go ahead and get the cross-sectional area, which is just six square inches. That's easy to see. Okay? So we still need the minimum, and notice this is the minimum uh, I. We still need the minimum radius of gyration, which is the square root of I minimum over A. So you can see you're going to plug in 2 here, you're going to plug in 6 here, take the square root, it comes out to about 0.5773 inches. Everybody with me so far? Okay, so now we need to figure out the effective length. Well, look at the picture. Notice on the ram end that it's welded. What does that suggest about the ram end of the rod? It's fixed. Right, it's not going to rotate, in other words. Now, it's fixed not in the sense that it's not going to move, it's just fixed in the sense that it's not going to rotate. Okay, what about the other end? 
pin, that's right. So it's fixed pin. What's the K factor for fixed pin? 2.0. Now you're thinking of fixed free. 0.8. 0 0.8. Let's go back. You can see it here in the slides. Notice we're using the practical value. The theoretical value is 0.7, but for fixed pin, a more practical, more realistic value is 0.8. So we're going to take 80% of the length of the column. Let's do this. Let's get this way. K L over R min. K is 0.8. What is the length of that column? <coughs> How much? 12.75. 12.75 feet. If you convert that to inches, that's 122.4 inches. Does that make sense? Okay. And then the minimum, the reason I did that is because my radius of gyration is in inches. So by 0.5773 inches, when you plug this into your calculator, you find that the slenderness ratio is about 212. And uh, yeah, 212.0. Should it be 153 inches? Okay. What's that? Should be 153. Because 12 feet is 144. Yeah, 12 times 12 is 144. Plus oh, you know what five. I did? You're right, you're right. What's the number you have? 153. 153. I went ahead and plugged in 0 0.8 times 153. Check and see that this comes out now. It should. So I went ahead and took 80% of 12.75 feet, got 10.2 feet, and then converted. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So that corrects the, the length. Okay, so there we go. So since, since the slenderness ratio is greater than the column constant, will this column tend to buckle? Yes. Okay. So in order to figure out the maximum load at which or that this column can support without buckling, well, we have to use Euler's equation. Okay. So Euler's equation. So let's do that. It looks like this. The critical load is pi squared E A over the effective length over R squared. Notice that this whole thing is just the slenderness ratio. And so calculating the critical load, we get uh, pi squared 30 E6 PSI, 6 square inches for the area. And the slenderness ratio is 212.0 squared. Notice it's non-dimensional. What units will I end up with here? You can see it if you do this. Pound force per square inch. Just pounds force, that's right. In fact, the number you get is about 39,528 or so pounds force. Even that's too many significant places. I can't guarantee all those. So what about the load. Well, the applied load is equal to the critical load divided by the design factor. And so the design factor, in other words, how much wiggle room we have is going to be the critical load divided by the actual applied load. So that's 39,528 divided by what's actually applied, which is 12,500 pounds. Both of these are pounds, of course, I won't write them. The result is 3.16. So it's about 300% oversized, which is probably a good thing. Questions on that? What problems might occur with this design? Like real world application problems or yeah, real world, world application? What, might, what problem? The rod would become warped over time. Why so? Because just uh, repeated loads. Fatigue. Repeated loads could be a problem. Fatigue could be a problem, especially if we've got very high numbers of cycles. Since this is a trash compactor of some type. Looks like uh, probably it's not going to see that many loads in its lifetime, so fatigue may or may not be a problem. It will eventually fatigue. What else? Warping. What's that? The shafting pin, which would cause jamming in the piston. Okay, so the, the ram to jam. You can walk your pinhole out with like your kind of elliptical. Right, okay. So as long as the pin has to be sized appropriately as well. What I was thinking was in terms of buckling, the load might not be centrally loaded, like they've said. This is a ram that's compact and trash. So it could be something harder on one side of the ram than on the other. And in that case, there's going to be an eccentric load. Okay? And that's going to tend to cause bending in the shaft, a moment in the shaft, which will tend to cause buckling much sooner. And so the critical load will be even lower, and this factor of safety may disappear pretty quickly. Questions? Comments?